This beautiful piece of art right here actually won first place in an art competition. The problem? It was not created by a human, and people are pissed. The winning piece was created by artificial intelligence. Actual artists who got beat out are not happy. And it begs the question, what are going to be the consequences for artists all around the world? And would it be possible to create a whole game using AI art only? Well, today we're gonna find out by having me, a non-artist, try to create a 2D game from scratch with nothing but AI art. This means I can't draw anything myself, I can't get any art online. All I'm allowed to use is this guy right here. So let's dive straight into it. So I'm sure that a lot of you have seen some of this amazing art that's been generated, and I agree, it is quite astonishing. However, most of what I've seen would not be possible to be used for a game, but uh, would mainly be used for concept art or similar. So the question is, is it even possible to get something that we can use to create a game? Well, let's try it, shall we? I'm going to be using this Stream Studio, which runs Stable Diffusion's AI generator. So the way this works is by, you just basically write a few words like Shrek in an astronaut suit, then you just wait a few seconds and that's definitely Shrek in an astronaut suit. It's looking a bit scuffed, but uh, you can even give more and more details like adding that he's on Mars or that the suit is yellow and he's on Mars. Like, <laughs> okay, but let's see if we can get some art. So if we write pixel art, will it give us something? Okay, uh, I mean, this looks like pixels, but I have no idea what it is. So let's be a bit more specific. Okay, okay. Okay, that looks a bit like two characters. However, I I don't know if we could actually use this for something. Yeah, I don't think pixel art is going to work for us with the uh, generator. Okay, so let's just try to make a character before even deciding what kind of game to make. If we can't make a character, we can't make a game. Generation after generation after generation. And I'm not getting anything that I would be able to use to animate. I mean, I would need it to uh, do a T-pose or similar, but uh, me writing this to the generator is not helping. Without it, I won't be able to animate. Like, the AI would give these weirdly posed characters or chop parts of them off so that they can't be used. I was basically ready to give up this project. But then I had an idea. I mean, uh, I'll just make a game where you're a fish. Huh? So with my fishy idea, I actually had an idea for an easy game to make that will totally not be a ripoff of a very popular mobile game. But before revealing the idea to you, let's throw together a mock-up of the game art and see if you can guess what the game is. But first, I started generating a bunch of these underwater scenes. A lot of it actually looked really cool. I mean, can you believe it? This is a computer making this. It also made this, and this, and this. I managed to create this cool mountain range. Uh, but then I went to get some more generations, and then this happened. Turns out, I actually need to pay to generate these images. <laughs> pay? <laughs> I'm not gonna pay. Yeah, so, since I happen to be quite broke at the moment, me has no money, hmm? And buying a bunch of images of Shrek doesn't seem like the best idea, you know? So I did some research. I found out there are actually three versions of Stable Diffusion. You know what that means. Okay, so with my new generator set up, uh, I tried to generate the fish, but uh, I had a ton of problems actually getting an actual fish generated for some reason. These uh, AI generators don't understand what I'm saying at all. After spending an hour with this, I said, uh, Four. It, and decided to use one of the fishes in the first underwater scene I generated. Let's call the fish Bob. Look how cute he is. So now that I have this large collection of images, Let's try to throw something together in GIMP to see what the game could look like. We have another problem. Each one of these images cannot actually be used directly on its own. I mean, uh, you're gonna have to separate everything from the background and all of that, so uh, I'm gonna have to do a lot of cutting and cleaning up. Yeah, so just give me a minute to clean all of this up. Okay, here it is. Can you guess what game I'm definitely not ripping off yet? If you guessed it beforehand, why don't you give me a little sub, you know? And if you didn't, little sub maybe? I don't know, it's whatever. <laughs> Please. Okay, so now that I made half of the job... Who the fork made half of the job, stinky human? Uh, well, now that the computer made half of the job, let's make the game. As you know, I'm gonna make Flappy Bird. I mean, uh, Floppy Fish. We're gonna need our character Bob jumping uh, forward slightly and trying to avoid some rocks. However, me, this sounds like a lot of maths. 
So I have this crazy idea, right? Hear me out. So instead of having Bob actually moving forward, I'll just have the background move backwards. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy, but uh, I promise you it's gonna work. Doing it this way, all I need to do is add gravity to Bob and add a force upwards every time we press space. Now he will fall down and you can just jump back up. This jump is looking a bit boring though, so what I did was I tried to add some rotation to it. Yeah, it worked great, as you can see. I made some slight adjustments, and then I made some more adjustments, and a little bit more. And then finally I got this. It's not terribly exciting, but uh, it is something. To actually make it look like it's moving forward though, as I mentioned, I made a script that will make the background move. I then have two of these separate background images. Once one of them has moved to a certain point, it just pops back to the beginning. This way, the game can go on forever and you won't use any additional memory. By the way, if you want to see how I made the blueprints for this game along with explanations and support me making these YouTube videos and games, consider supporting my Patreon. I just created it and I'm going to be putting up a bunch of cool stuff up there like 3D asset packs as well as the project blueprints for most of my projects. Also regular updates on what I'm up to and many other things. Anyways, back to the video. Now I'm just going to need to create our cliff obstacles. Okay, I think I need them to be a bit longer. How about I just put another one on top? And another one, and maybe another, oh, yeah. You get what I'm saying. Perfect. So, finally, I made this script that just sends these rocks towards the player at an increasing rate. Only problem is that they will keep on moving away into the distance forever. I mean, it's not the big issue, except your computer might die after some time, but uh, I should probably do something about that. Anyways. I also need to make it so that you can't just continue jumping upwards. But I actually have no idea what to do in that case. I mean, uh, it would make sense to just have the water surface and make Bob just plop out of there. But uh, then I need to come up with some obstacle instead of rocks coming from the top. And I just can't think of any, so, uh, so you know, I'm stupid. But um, I just decided that I would uh, take some of these boulders that I uh, generated before. I then scaled them up and stuck them to the top, like floating. I mean, that makes sense, right? Uh, so now, instead of being open water, the game takes place in a cave. Problem solved. Just to finish it off, I made some particle systems with fishes and bubbles and fun stuff like that. And I added some sounds just to make the world feel a bit more alive. So here it is, definitely not a Flappy Bird ripoff with AI generated art. But let's see what it looks like. If you enjoyed the video you might like to see this video where I made a fighting game to beat up my friends. But until next time. Ciao.